When we use the word sustainable development, it often conjures images of bureaucrats at the United Nations whipping up ways of solving global problems. No doubt there is some truth to the origin of this term coming from such global forums. However, it is important for leaders in development practice to appreciate that there is indeed hard science behind this seemingly fluffy concept and for them to develop ways of most effectively applying such knowledge. This course is an attempt to give a wide range of professionals key content knowledge to bridge science with the practice of sustainable development. We have partnered with the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, of which the University of Queensland is a member, to build on the content of their excellent course, The Age of Sustainable Development, but with greater emphasis on the linkages between science and policy. So let us start off with some key ways of defining the term sustainability by reviewing some definitions by visionaries who have considered this abstract term from various dimensions. I have underlined the key attributes which are of particular relevance to us as we read these definitions. First, environmental educator David Orr's definition links environmental design by humans with the living or biotic world. He also injects the essential physical concept of entropy in his definition. Entropy is a process by which greater disorder tends to prevail in natural systems over time, and energy is required to bring back environmental order. Thus, finding sustainable development outcomes is often a struggle between entropy and energy to minimize impact on the environment. Lester Brown, the founder of the World Watch Institute and the Earth Policy Institute, has provided us this definition of sustainable societies, which is one based on intergenerational equity. This is similar to the definition that the World Commission on Sustainable Development used in its landmark volume, Our Common Future, published in 1988. Considering our impact on future generations in the short term versus the long term can greatly influence our actions. Economists often use discounting factors about future benefits because of uncertainty, but sustainable development researchers may question the scale of such discounting to ensure accountability of future impacts, both positive and negative. The golden rule also brings forth the notion of empathy. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This too provides an important moral compass that is so important for leaders in development practice to keep in perspective. Finally, if we are to transition towards sustainable development, there is a fundamental shift which is needed from linear processes to cyclical processes, which is highlighted in this insight from Swedish sustainability researcher Carl Henrik Robert. Natural systems operate in cycles, from elemental cycles such as carbon, nitrogen or phosphorus, to key physical cycles such as the hydrological cycle. Human systems that are aspiring for sustainability will likely need to follow such cyclical paradigms as well. The concept of a circular economy, which we will consider towards the end of this course, is aimed at realizing this approach. We hope this course will give you a better understanding of sustainable development, both the science behind it and how it can be practiced. Thank you.